Geekom's XT13 Pro brings back Intel's finest 4x4 inch NUC design for another round. A sleek and sexy looking metal mini PC that features Intel's 13th generation flagship processor. So, how much better is it than the XT12 Pro? And has anything else changed? But more importantly, can it tame that i9 CPU? All good questions I just asked myself and pretended that you asked me. Well, they're going to be answered shortly, right after this message. The EZUS Rec Experts screen recorder is an all-in-one solution for recording everything on your screen, whether it's online meetings, gameplay, tutorials, and more. Rec Expert supports 4K and 60fps in various video formats, and there are plenty of additional features, including a simple video editor to clean up your recording. Give it a test run with the link in the video description. Nothing has changed on the outside of the XC12 Pro. It's still the same beautifully designed case made mostly from metal with a plastic top that's very well put together and has a premium feel to it. The previous gen i9-12900H CPU has been upgraded to the i9-13900H for the XT13 Pro. Cores and XE graphics remain the same. The increased performance comes purely from higher clock speeds. Geekom's XT13 Pro is pre-built with 32GB of DDR4 RAM and 2TB storage for $949 US dollars. Geekom has provided me with a 5% off coupon which brings it down to around $902. Still a hefty price tag for a mini PC, but at least it comes with a 3 year warranty. In the box you'll find the same accessories as the XT12 Pro, a compact power supply, monitor mount and HDMI cord. The ports also remain unchanged. Dual 10 gigabit USB 3 on the front, an audio jack and power button. On the back, dual USB 4 40 gigabit, dual HDMI 2.0, a USB 3 10 gigabit, USB 2 and Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN. Neither USB 4 port allows you to power the mini from a USB-C monitor. HDMI ports max out at 4K 60Hz, while the USB 4 ports can go much higher. Wireless is handled by a MediaTek chip, and let's check the Mini's range by starting with my Bluetooth audio speaker test. Unfortunately, the Bluetooth range of the XT13 Pro is really poor. This is the worst result yet. Unless you're close to the Mini, you're better off using a Bluetooth USB dongle. Luckily, that's not the case with Wi-Fi range, which is really good. I played Valorant 12 meters or 39 feet away from the router using the 5G band, and the client didn't report any network issues during the full gaming session. So, the XT13 Pro passes the test with flying colors. That being said, it looks like the Bluetooth antenna has been placed in a bad spot. It's easy to open this mini. Four screws and jiggle off the bottom casing. The M.2 drives connect with thermal pads to a copper plate for cooling. The unoccupied M.2 slot is a 2242 M SATA. An Acer Gen 4 NVMe storage drive is used for the OS, which based on previous tests will be a good performer. Dual channel DDR4 3200 is included. And the leftovers on the board are interesting, including an SD card reader which is blocked by the case, and a SATA ribbon port which is also blocked by the case. As usual, Geekom's XT13 Pro comes with Windows 11 Pro, and no issues were found scanning the OS for malware. Ubuntu didn't have any problem working straight off the USB. Okay then, let's see how the Geekom XT13 Pro holds up in the benchmarks. It's a tiny bit faster in single core Cinebench than the previous generation, nothing worth mentioning. In multi-core, there's a 7.5% jump over the previous gen mini with the default power profile in the BIOS. But the XT13 Pro adds a performance profile which the XT12 didn't have and that pushes it 20% ahead. Geekbench shows a similar result as before in single core. And in multi core, it comes out ahead by a lot with the performance mode. Video encoding, no surprises. Slightly faster at default and a big gain with performance mode enabled. AV1 encode shows the same. The 13900H doesn't support hardware AV1 encoding that was introduced with the latest Intel Media Lake CPUs. So, these benchmarks show good gen-on-gen -gen gains, 
But the 13900H still struggles to compete against AMD's and Intel's newer flagship CPUs. Let's check out the integrated graphics. There's a smaller generational improvement with just 6% in DX11 and a better 10% in DX12. Again, can't compete with the newer flagships. Not a lot of data in the Steel Nomad benchmark yet, but you can see it's trailing the newer CPUs by a lot. I did mention earlier that Acer Drive performs well, and it is one of the fastest Gen 4 SSDs I've tested with sequential read and write speeds close to maxing out the Gen 4 spec. Now let's put the XT12 Pro against the XT13 Pro in gaming and see if there are any big differences. I'm using performance mode, and yes, there is a big difference in Counter-Strike 2, much greater than the benchmarks. Dota 2, it's closer. Valorant has a noticeably higher frame rate on the XT13 Pro. And the same with League of Legends. GTA 5 has a big gain gen on gen. But do you want even more GPU power? Well, you can use an external graphics card with the USB 4 port. I'm playing at 4K with my RTX 3070. With emulation, you get very similar results to the 3D Mark benchmarks. Overall, the XT13 did better than I expected. The previous gen XT12 Pro didn't have any problems decoding my 4K video project, and unsurprisingly, neither does the XT13. It makes for a good video workstation, although that SD card slot would have come in handy. Geekom has been slowly adding more features to the BIOS. Thanks for listening to my feedback. This one has a few options such as the power loss policy, power mode I've been harping on about, and RTC wake settings. You can tweak the power mode to get more performance at the expense of higher power draw and fan noise, or lower it to get the opposite. The maximum memory frequency option didn't do anything when setting the memory higher than 3200 MHz. An idle power draw of 10 watts puts the XT13 in the middle of the chart and is identical to the XT12 Pro. The extra performance using the higher power limit profile doesn't come free. It adds an extra 17 watts to the maximum power draw, making it the second highest result. Whether you're using the default or performance profile, the CPU tops out at 100C and thermal throttling kicks in. Fan noise under load is low using the default power mode, but shoots up with performance to one of the noisier mini PCs. Just like the XT12 Pro, SSD cooling on this Mini is good enough to prevent the drive from thermal throttling. So that's all the data. Let's go over the pros and cons. Geekom's XT13 Pro is one of the nicest looking mini PCs around and comes with a 3 year warranty. Two USB 4 ports are a nice inclusion. The generational improvement is large thanks to the performance mode. Wi-Fi range is great, however Bluetooth range is poor. Any Bluetooth device that needs to be further away than a couple of meters will need a USB dongle to function properly. Even in the game tests, you might have seen that the CPU can hit the mid-90s Celsius. The i9-13900H is almost a mid-range chip now compared to the current flagships, and while the 2TB SSD is appealing, the price of the overall unit is high. So, that's Geekom's XT13 Pro bringing back the cool Intel NUC Desk Edition case. But if you prefer an AMD CPU Mini, you can check out my review of the Geekom AE7 Mini PC right here. Cheers!